Hey, there's John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to another edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. Now, this is Pro Tour Amaket Weekend. At the time of recording, we've seen the first day of the Pro Tour. Day two is about to commence, and a lot is going to change over the course of the weekend. Prices in Standard have already been impacted from what we saw on day one, but that's going to continue to happen as we move through day two, and especially on Sunday with the top eight. So we will come back on Monday and do a special edition of the Market Watch recapping Standard and really doing a deep dive into all things Standard and where cards fall after this big weekend. But for today, we're going to do as we normally do and take a look at cards from Standard, Modern, and Legacy. Now, quickly before we get started, fast reminder, if you check out the description below, you'll find a couple ways to help support the channel, one of which is the Amazon Affiliate Store. If you make any purchases from any links there, whether it be singles you see today or any other products, a small percentage will come back to help support the channel. Also, you'll find a link to our Patreon page down below, and we're really close to our next Patreon goal. Check that out. Thank you to everybody who has participated in both those programs. Having said that, let's get into the information for today. Before we get into the cards that are increasing and decreasing in value, I wanted to show you the slide that was on the stream yesterday, Friday at the Pro Tour, which shows the makeup of the different archetypes that are in the tournament. Now, a couple things I want to point out. First off, Mardu vehicles, yes, still taking up a huge portion of the field at 26.2%, 99 folks playing that deck in the tournament. Teamer, Etherworks Marvel coming in second, but I do want to point out if you throw all the Etherworks decks together, you have, of course, Teamer, Saltai, Four Color, Bant. It's actually another large percentage of the field. Now, coming in third would be Zombies, which is actually pretty exciting because that is truly a new deck. Yes, a lot of the Zombies do come from Shadows Over Innistrad, but this is not a deck without the cards from Amonkhet, where the first two archetypes are pretty familiar with. They've been bolstered by Amonkhet for sure, and there's cards from that set in these decks. But for the most part, the Zombies deck is the first like really new deck that we're seeing here. Now, if you combine the mono-black version with the white-black version, that's actually a good portion of the fields coming out at about 20%. That's decent. Uh, there's also some other outliers here that are doing well, like Blue Red Control, that actually looks like a very good deck. You have the Energy decks that are still around. New Perspective Combo, uh, that's a card that New Perspective as a single actually spiked a little bit yesterday due to that deck. Now, it just missed the top five. It would have been number six. So we'll talk more about that one on Monday, I have no doubt. Uh, we also have even White Blue Flash showing up, Delirium Deck still hanging in there, and even a few folks running Cryptolith, right, which is pretty awesome. So there is diversity overall, but you can't ignore the fact that Mardu Vehicles and Etherworks Marvel right now are in the top of the field. Now, a lot's going to be decided as to how these singles unfold over the course of today as we see which of these decks actually shake out to be on the top and eventually make it to the top eight. That's going to make a big difference in singles prices over the course of the next 48 hours or so. So having said that, let's jump into the cards for today, and we're going to begin with the standard cards at lost value. Now, these are cards that were maybe a little overpriced coming out of the pre-release time, or maybe some cards that didn't perform at least to the expectations that some players had. Coming in number five is Glorybringer, down $1.06 to seven forty three. Now, this is a card I would keep an eye on today. I feel like it will probably stabilize, maybe even go up in value over the course of the next day or two. Now, day one of the Pro Tour, they purposely did not show us a lot of Mardu Vehicles decks on the stream, right? Because the anticipation that since it's such a large portion of the field, many of those decks will end up being piloted to top spots, which means we're going to see probably a fair amount of those on camera day two and day three. So they didn't want to show too much of that on day one, which makes sense. But because of that, Glorybringer didn't get any attention on day one. This is a card that is actually really good in some builds of those decks. So expect this card to maybe get some camera time today and could potentially stabilize. Now the big thing this card has going against it is it is a rare and a brand new set where lots of packs are being opened. So quantities of this card are very abundant right now. So if it does spike, it will be a temporary movement. Coming in number four is As Foretold, down to $1.11 to eight fifty six. Now, this card did capture everyone's imagination originally with how it interacts with Suspend, and there is a As Foretold Modern Control deck that is doing some work in small leagues right now. Now, for this card to stabilize and start to increase again, that deck has to put up a big result in a major tournament. We'll have to wait and see on that one. But until then, this card will continue to fall a little bit. Still a very good commander card, though, regardless of everything else. 
Coming in number three, Nissa Stewart of Elements, down a dollar eighteen to fourteen fourteen. This is seeing a little bit of play in standard as people are trying to feel out what the right meta is and what the right amounts of cards like this are in particular decks. So I think she will see more play going on in the future, maybe post-rotation. But at least for right now, I do think she'll continue to fall. I mean, she had a pretty high price tag coming out of the pre-release. I feel like she's probably more of an $8, $9 card eventually. Coming in number two, Ronos the Indomitable, down $1.31 to $16.24. Another card that hasn't quite grabbed the standard world as much as a lot of people thought it would in the beginning. Now, it's still an amazing commander card, another card that has a lot of potential to grow at post-rotation. And coming in at number one, Gideon of the Trials, down two forty-five to twenty ninety-nine. Now, this is the highest price card from Amonkhet when it was pre-released, and it also is still the highest price card, regular card in Amonkhet. But the thing with the card is, much like some of the other ones we looked at today, it is seeing a little bit of play. It's definitely out there. It's not absent, but at the same time, it's not in the abundance a lot of people anticipated when it was first coming out. I think a lot of people thought these Gideon tribal decks were going to be something that would be a huge portion of the field or something like that. Not to say that that couldn't happen at some point as the meta evolves, but I think at this point, this is another card that has a lot of potential post-rotation. Still a great card, still really, really good, and we'll see standard play potentially we'll continue to even see some play in modern it already has a little bit and this is an awesome commander card again so this is definitely one to watch i do think gideon though will trend down a little bit since we haven't seen any really big performances so far this weekend from this card all right let's move into the standard cards that have gained value this week as you can imagine some of the things that occurred yesterday definitely have impacted some prices Coming at number five, Relentless Dead, up $3.52 to $20. Well, this card's back at $20. <laughs> Relentless Dead, of course, being a major part of those zombie decks. Coming in at number four, Sphinx of the Final Word, up $4.25 to $5.50. Now, this one is interesting because it appears that over the course of yesterday, we've seen who the standard finisher is going to be. And we're going to look at that card in just a second. But prior to the Pro Tour, there was a little bit of speculation around this card. Maybe a mirror match sideboard card or something like that for control, but I really don't see it panning out quite honestly, and especially considering it will be rotating out in a few months. I don't feel like you want to pick this card up for five, six dollars. It's probably going to come down after this weekend or maybe even over the course of the next day or so. So yeah, I think this has kind of reached its peak, but let's look at number three, Torrential Gear Hulk, up 460 to 2024. Now this is the finisher that we've seen at the Pro Tour. There was a lot of speculation over control finishers. What's the best one? Well, you know what? You didn't have to look very far to figure out. Torrential Gear Hulk from Kaladesh really is the one that's starting to sift to the top. Coming in at number two, Etherworks Marvel, up 475 to 950. Etherworks decks got a lot of camera time yesterday. And because of that, guess what? Etherworks Marvel is spiking pretty hard when you consider percentage wise. So this is a card that, again, it's going to ride the spike for a short period of time coming out of the Pro Tour. It could spike more if we see a lot of good performances today or if one or two of these, maybe top eights. We'll definitely have to watch it. And considering the portion of the field that this card is taking up, I would assume we'll see a copy or two in the top eight. Coming in number one, another card from that deck, Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger, up 745 to 2395. Now, Ulamog in general is just a good card. It's seen play in Legacy, it's seen play in Modern. But again, yesterday, he got a lot of camera time, a lot of spotlight on this card. And because of that, it has, again, jumped up. Now, again, this will be a temporary increase due to the excitement of the weekend. Give this card another week or two. It will start to stabilize back down a little bit. And it is a card that is starting to approach rotation time. And that's something you want to consider. All right, let's move on to modern. And we'll start off with the cards that lost value this week couple interesting things going on I think in the world of modern right now one of the things you do have to take into account and I'll point it out when it's applicable is Iconic Masters is coming out in November and we really don't know what that means but I would say this any card that you feel is suspiciously absent from the world of magic over the last year and that includes anything from Eternal Masters to Modern Masters 2017 to supplemental products like the Commander decks or even last year's Conspiracy I would start to maybe get a little suspicious that that card could show up in Iconic Masters. So there is a little bit of that speculation already starting to happen in the market. But let's look at the cards. Coming in at number five is Pact of Negation, down 341 to 3932. This is the Modern Masters version. This card actually spiked 
last week, so it's just stabilizing and snapping back a little bit this week. It's a big part of the ad nauseum decks in modern. Coming in, number four is Box Opal, down 362 to $55. This is the Modern Masters 2015 version. Now, Mox Opal is another card that has ridden a big wave of spikes and increases over the last few months. So this is just stabilizing to probably a normal market value at this point. Coming in number three, doubling season down 462 to 5709. This is the modern masters version. Now, doubling season, of course, really ignited when the commander products came out due to the fact that it played so well with breed lethality. But again, this is one of those cards that maybe is suspiciously absent from a lot of products. It hasn't shown up in modern masters 2017. It wasn't in the last eternal masters. This is one that maybe, just maybe, could be an iconic master. Coming in at number two is Tarmogoy from Future Side, down 556 to 129.90. Now, the Future Side Tarmogoy has got the unique art, the unique card frame. It's the original version. It's always going to be a little bit higher than its counterparts, but we have seen that the Tarmogoy counterparts have started to come down a little bit over the course of the last week or so. Because of that, this card is following, but don't expect it to crash down to like the $100 range or anything like that. I think we'll be lucky to see this get down to 120, 125 at the lowest. Coming in at number one, Noble High Arc from Conflux, down 591 to 62.99. Another card that maybe is, oh, I don't know, suspiciously absent. This felt like this card would have been great in Modern Masters 2017, considering the multicolor theme that was going on in that limited environment. So where was Noble High Arc? I don't know. All right, let's look at the top five modern cards that have gained value this week. Coming in at number five, Avacyn Angel of Hope. Small increase here, $1.44 to $27.75, but this is a great commander card and a fan favorite. Coming in at number four, the first of many minus one, minus one counters matters cards we're going to see today. This is Flourishing Defenses up $1.73 to $2.79. Now, I do want to point out a couple of things about these cards. First off, Amonkhet, of course, has a minus one, minus one theme that is very popular, especially in the world of Commander right now. And that is starting to drive the value of some of these older cards, especially from the Shadowmore block. We're going to see a number of Shadowmore cards today that play with minus one, minus one counters that are doing really well this week. Now, I do think this is being pushed more by commander than modern. A card like this, if I have casting cost, I don't really see this being a modern card. This is definitely a commander card to me. Not to say that someone couldn't mess around in the world of modern with these minus one, minus one counters and brew something. There could be some brewers out there picking up some of these cards too. That could be why they're being driven up. But I think for the most part, this is commander. But this is the first example of a few we'll see. Coming in at number three, Devoted Druid, up $2 to $7.98. Now, yes, this does play around with minus one, minus one counters, which is probably the main reason it's gone up this week. This card actually spiked really hard about two or three weeks ago, and it stabilized last week, but it's going up again this week. Now, I will say, though, you don't want to discount the fact, though, that this card also does see modern play currently as is in the Obzon Company. Coming in at number two is Cryptic Command. This is the Modern Masters version, up 213 to 3190. Last week we saw the Lorewind version go up. This week the Modern Masters version is just following. And coming in at number one is Dusk Urchins, up 338 to 574. Well, here's another one of those Shadowmore cards. So we saw a rare now, an uncommon, and a common that have all increased in value from Shadowmore. Now, part of the problem too with Shadowmore, and I mentioned this in past videos, is the print run on that particular set and that era of magic is very, very low. It was a time period where a lot of folks were not playing the game either due to financial reasons or just the fact they didn't like the direction and the style of the game at that time. And because of that, it's real easy for cards from sets like Shadowmore to jump up. And that's what we're seeing here, I think, more than anything. But this is another card to keep an eye on for sure. All right, let's move on to Legacy. Got a couple interesting things this week. Let's jump into the cards that lost value. Coming in at number five is the revised version of Tundra down 711 to 182.24. Number four, Mishra's Factory from Antiquities. This is the winter variant, down $8.99.99. Now, this is not a reserve list card, like most cards we see on these lists. However, this is a rare variant of the card that a lot of players gravitate to because of the unique art. Coming in number three is Brain Geyser from Unlimited, down 975 to 3525. This card spiked recently, it's just kind of stabilizing this week. Coming in at number two, Jazam Jin, down 1448 to 467.46. 
Another card that's just stabilizing. I mean, it's a very popular card. It does see play in 93-94 format, but it's also just one of those iconic magic cards. And coming in at number one, Living Plane from Legends, down 28.99 this week to 148.49. Even though this is a big downswing for this card currently, overall this card has gained a lot of value over the last six, eight months or so. I remember a few months back saying, you know, if you want to buy a card that potentially could go up, that's just a classic magic card, Living Plains is a good way to go. At that time, it was only like a $40, $50 card. But yeah, here we are. It's still at $150 even after the downswing. This is one to watch. All right, let's move into the cards that have gained a value this week. Coming in at number five, Unlimited Volcanic Island. It's up $878 to $399.95. Coming in at number four, King Solomon. Up $911 to $50.99. Now, here's another Reserve List, Arabian Nights card. Very unique and rare card. So, as you can imagine, it's going up in value. Also, it's important not to discount the fact that if you do play 9394 format, this is a nice foil to Jazam Jin, which is a very popular card in some decks there. Coming in at number three is Candelabra of Tanos, up 1301 to 467.50. Number two, City of Brass from Arabian Nights, up $20.88 to 10192. Now, this is not a reserve list card. Of course, this has been reprinted many, many times. But again, there's a lot of attention right now on this Arabian Nights set, especially for these rare cards, partially because of 9394 format, but also because a lot of collectors just are gravitating towards these cards right now. You're seeing a lot of spikes in those cards, a lot of folks speculating on different ones. So Arabian Nights, just in general, very hot set right now. And finally, coming in at number one is Scrubland from Unlimited, up 35.76 to 189.50. Now, Scrubland has always been kind of the cheapest dual land to pick up, still is, but I think a lot of folks are catching on to that fact too, because if you can have an Unlimited dual land for $150, $180, doesn't feel like a bad deal to me in the long run, just because this is a reserve list card, and of course these are very popular. Now, some recent changes to Legacy, considering we saw Top Band, which weakened Miracles, and brought some other decks to the forefront. That is definitely playing a role here, so that's something you want to watch for. But for the most part, I think if you can pick up a cheap dual land, and unfortunately cheap is like 150 190 bucks, I think a lot of people are going to jump on that too. All right, having said that, those are the cards for today. So like I said, we'll be back on Monday. We're going to take a deep dive into all things standard and see where everything shakes out after the weekend. But until then, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe, and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible by the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store, where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.